Okay, this is a solving percent problems video. Um, this is my first attempt at a video with a lot of writing in it, so we'll see how well this goes. Okay, so uh, this is a percent type of problem. We're going to use proportions to solve this, uh, but before that, I'm going to read through this to uh, see, what, see what we have going on. Okay, so a poll taken the day before an election showed that 22.5% of voters plan to vote for a cer certain candidate. If 1,800, 1,800 voters participated, how many voted for that candidate? Okay, now when you have um, these type of percent problems, uh, one thing that we need to do is we need to look through the problem and try to identify um, certain pieces of it, um, mainly just the numbers. Whenever you read a word problem, you want to try to identify any of the numbers. So the first two that, um, that jump out at me is 22.5% and 1,800 voters. Okay, those two numbers I'm going to use somehow, some way to uh, try to figure out this percent problem. Okay, now whenever you encounter a percent problem, there is one kind of formula, you can kind of call it a formula, um, that is really very useful for these type of problems. And that, that formula is the percent over 100 is equal to the part over the whole. Now notice earlier I said that we talked about uh, solving this using proportions. Remember that a proportion is just a fraction equal to a fraction. And so that's kind of what we have here. This formula, if you want to call it that, is just a proportion. Uh, I guess just something we commonly use for percent problems to make them a little bit simpler. Okay, so now the thing is, is we got three pieces of this formula. We got a percent that we got to plug in, we got a part that we got to plug in, and we have a whole uh, that we got to plug in. So there's only three things that we really need to figure out. Uh, one of those things, actually, we will not be able to figure out. That's kind of going to be our variable, but we'll get there here in a minute. So as I read through this again, we're going to try to figure out which numbers are the percent, which ones the parts, and which ones are the whole. Okay, a poll taken the day before an election showed that 22.5% of voters plan to vote for a certain candidate. If 1,800 voters participated, how many voted for that candidate? Okay, now, as I read through it again, and again, whenever you uh, work out these word problems, you might have to read through them again and again and again to figure out everything you need to know about them. Um, the first number that comes out is 22.5%. Okay, that right there, that's kind of easy to figure out where that's going to go here in our little formula. That's going to go in the percent spot. So over here, I'm going to do a little bit of work. 22.5 over 100 is equal to the part over the whole. Okay, now i got to figure out, um, out of this problem, what the part is and what the whole is. Okay, if 1,800 voters participated, how many voted for that candidate? Okay, now as I read that, i got to think, okay, that 1,800, is that going to be part or is that going to be the whole? Okay, now this is where the understanding of the problem comes in handy. Um, I know that 1,800 is going to be my largest number. That's the total number of voters that came in and filled out ballots on that certain day or maybe the certain couple of days. Okay, so that's going to be, that's the large number. That's the big number. So that right there, this 1,800 is going to be the whole. Okay. The part right here is going to be how many voted for that candidate. So this empty spot right here, we'll call it the variable. Um, so we'll, we're talking about a candidate, so I'm going to use C for a variable. That's the part. That C stands for how many people voted for that candidate. That's the empty, that's the empty spot. That's the part that I don't know. Okay, so out of 1,800 voters, how many of them voted for that certain candidate? Okay, so now I have a nice, neat little equation to solve. Um, this is just like the proportions video that we did um, uh, just a couple of videos ago. Anyway, to solve this, we have to use a cross product. Cross product. So I have to take 22.5 times 1,800, using parentheses to denote multiplication, okay, equals C times 100. Well, I'm just going to put 100C. And there we are. Okay, now one thing I'm actually going to show here, I'm not actually going to multiply those numbers quite yet. What I'm going to do is I, I look at the right side, I want to get C by itself, because I want to know how many votes that candidate got. So what I'm going to do first is actually I'm going to divide by 100. This is one technique to use 
uh, when solving equations, you don't have to do all the mathematics all at once. Sometimes you can wait a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this 100 and divide it over to the other side. So I'm going to divide by 100. Divide by 100. I'm losing some space right here, so I'm going to go that way. So what this ends up being is C is equal to 22.5 times 1800, all of that divided by 100. And notice I kind of switched things around just a little bit. This C on this side is last, and I kind of flipped it so it's first, and then this over here was first, I switched that so it's last. You can flip those around a little bit, um, just as long as everything stays equivalent. Uh, that's a kind of a technique that I like to use. I like my variables to come first, so that's why I use that, but anyway. Um, so what I have now is I have 22.5 times 1800 and then divide by 100. Uh, if, you're, if you're pretty good with the math, you realize that I can actually divide this first. So this is actually 22.5 times 18. These zeros are going to cancel out. The 1800 divided by 100 is just going to leave me 18. You don't need to know that, but this right here you can plug into your calculator. It's one nice easy step. Divided by 100, and so in this case, C is equal to 405. Okay, C is equal to 405. That's a, uh, a little bit lower than I want to on my paper. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this just a little bit so I can actually write my answer. This right down here, uh, C is equal to 405. C is equal to 405. That is not my answer. Okay, uh, a lot of students will make this mistake once they get down to this point, they think, oh, okay, C is equal to 405, my teacher's going to know what that is, boom, that's my answer. Well, in the real world, the thing is, is when, when somebody tries to read this problem or tries to figure out what you did or, or, or you're trying to explain this to somebody, 405, C equals 405 means absolutely nothing to them. If you look back up into our problem up here, there's no C's, there's no variables, there's nothing to that effect. So C makes no sense whatsoever. So make sure when you have a problem like this, make sure you actually write what the answer is. C equals 405, I have no idea what that means. Okay? But this tells me, because I use C for a variable, C stands for the number of people who voted for that candidate. Okay? Now the only label I have for that candidate is just, just that, it's that candidate. I really actually, honestly, the problem doesn't really tell me much more than that. So anyway, this tells me, since C is equal to 405, that tells me that 405 people voted for that candidate. Okay, that right there is your answer. Okay. You'll save a lot of people a lot of heartache, you'll save your former, or excuse me, your future employers uh, a lot of heartache, and you'll save your teachers a lot of heartache uh, if you actually write your answer. Just don't assume that everybody knows what this bottom part means. Not everybody's going to know that. So you have to use plain English, write out your answer. 405 people voted for that candidate. Okay, that is just one example of a percent problem. I will do more examples in later videos, uh, but that just gives you a basic idea. Um, Real quick, I want to rewrite this. Okay, so that was the answer to the problem. 405 people actually voted for that candidate, but we used this little formula. Percent over 100 is equal to part over whole. This is a very useful, uh, very useful formula to memorize. It's not, I, I hate calling it a formula because it's not technically a formula, um, but it's a nice little tool for us to use uh, to solve these type of percent problems. So that right there is probably the most important part of this problem.